The following is a true story based off the events of German soldier Stefan Westman in the summer of 1914, World War I. We had no idea of any impending war. We had no idea the danger of war exists. We served in our blue and red uniforms, but on the 1st of August 1914, mobilization orders came. We had to put on our field gray uniforms and at 2 o'clock in the morning on the 4th of August 1914, we marched out of Freiburg with torches in hand. Silent, without any music, without any singing, no enthusiasm. We were really packed down by our luggage and our kit, which weighed about 75 pounds per man. We crossed the Rhine over a very wobbly pontoon bridge. We marched mostly at night until we approached a huge forest in front of the town of Malhaus, or as we called it, Mohausen. We kept marching through the dark and silent night. We came to a forest, miles and miles of nothing but forest with dense underwood, and there we sat, the whole division, the 29th German division, was hidden. A solitary French aeroplane came, but it didn't see a thing and returned. The French army, in the meantime, had entered Mulhouse, and there they celebrated their victory. They brought with them colored posters which proclaimed their victory would be a glory, la libertania de luce. They celebrated and got drunk. They didn't even care to put out sentries at approaches to the town, and at 4 o'clock in the morning, on the 10th of August, we left our hideout. We marched in single line through the very high cornfields, and without saying a word, in complete silence, we entered the town of Mulhouse. There we found the French soldiers, partially drunk, partially asleep, and only a small resistance. The French retreated in such haste that we actually had to run after them. At first, we found heaps of French army blankets which the soldiers had thrown away. We took the French soldiers prisoner. Well, we had no choice, we had to. And then we came to a place called Altkirk. In Altkirk, we were stationed. We were billeted in a factory. We were fast asleep when all of a sudden a terrific infantry fire started. We rushed out and we fired in the direction where the bullets were coming from. The bullet hit a wall next to another German sentry who thought that he was fired on and he fired back. So two German companies fired at each other like mad. And the whole reason for this was that a midwife attending a birth of a baby moved out with a lamp in her hand outside. Several weeks later, we moved to the city of Lorraine, where another French army had attacked. There we had to join battle, and here we counterattacked and had terrific losses. My battalion was on a field which included a gravel pit, and in this gravel pit we took our wounded and later on our dead comrades. And when night came, we retreated to the main canal under heavy artillery fire, where we had to bury the bodies. Again, the French retreated, and again and again, we followed them onto the field of battle. I approached a wounded French soldier who spoke to me fluent in German, asking me for a drop of water. So desperate and hollow was his voice that I never forget. We entered the village, the company of approximately 200 men, and we were just taking off our knapsacks when the firing started. From all sides we were fired at. The cook and his mate were killed instantly. Quite a number of our soldiers were wounded and killed too. We stormed into the houses where the firing came, eager for revenge, any kind of revenge. But all we could find were some innocent looking peasants in blue blouses, but then we searched the houses and we found infantry rifles still hot from firing. They had fired on us and we took a few hostage, others we shot dead where they stood cowering in fear. And we marched to the coal district of Pas de Calais. There we dug out our first small trenches, slit trenches, each man for himself. Then we connected the trenches, and then the whole trench system from the North Sea to the Alps was formed. Only a few hundred meters beyond, however, the French lay in wait in their own trenches. One day, we were given the order to attack the French brickworks and trenches. We ran approximately a hundred yards when we came under machine gun fire, which was so terrific that the losses were so staggering that we got orders to lie down and seek shelter among the dead. Nobody dared to lift his head because the very moment the machine gunners saw any movement, they let fly. And then the British artillery opened up, and the corpses, and the hats, and the arms, and the legs flew about and about, and we were cut to pieces. But all of a sudden, the enemy fire ceased. Complete silence came over the battlefield. We looked over the brim of our shell hole, and there between the brick heaps, out there came a British soldier with a red cross flag, which he waved and waved and waved into the wind and he was followed by a stretcher bearer, 
who came slowly toward us and collected our wounded. We got up, we stood up, so completely dumbfounded with fear of death, and we helped them. Despite of everything, we helped them to bring our wounded back into our trenches. One hour later, a British army doctor came out, again with a red cross flag dancing in the wind, and he arranged a truce for two hours to let us collect our dead ones. I will never forget this generosity from the British, which I must say took place shortly after Christmas of 1914. One day we got orders to storm a French position. We got in, and my comrades fell in right behind me, left and right behind me, and then I was confronted by a French corporal, he with his bayonet at the ready, and I with mine. For a moment I felt the fear of death. I felt the Grim Reaper tap me on the shoulder, and for a second, a fraction of a second I realized that he was after my life exactly as I was after his. I was quicker than he was. I tossed away his rifle, and I ran my bayonet through his chest. He fell, he put his hand in place where I had hit him, and then I thrust again. Blood came out of his mouth, and there he died that day in 1914.